<laughs> Exam review one. Let's do it. Let's see what might happen on a test. Again, your practice exam is the best thing to see. Practice test. Practice test is very looking like an actual test. So you should do that. And I see when people fail the exam, I see they, they never took the practice test and I email and say, aha, uh -huh, I, I can see you did not take the practice test. Why would not take something which helps you to see how the exam looks like? Something like this. There is a problem on the review about the weather balloon. Weather balloon. Uh, this problem just checks your understanding of the integration and differentiation. If the weather balloon was, there's a function 18, 1 plus 2t squared. And the whole idea, I actually can show you again where all this stuff is. Everything is in modules for your convenience, but actually it's not like I just created it. It is here on the website. A weather balloon is being filled at a given rate, uh, liters per second, starting with a volume of zero liters at a time t equals zero. What is the volume of the balloon after one minute? The volume of the balloon after one minute. They ask you if you understand the idea behind integration. What is it? Derivative of this or the integral of this? To understand, you need to know what is given. Is this given a rate? Just a function at this fixed state or a result of the integration. Basically, is this, we have now this three coloration, color, coloration, correlation between distance, velocity, and acceleration. So which one is that, if you want? That's what I'm trying to say. Is this given distance or velocity or acceleration? Is this original function, is derivative or second derivative? And then which one they are asking me to find? Two ways to see it. They mentioned per. Per means they gave you uh, units with this word per. It was liters, liters slash or per second. This phrase already gives away that this is a rate. Two things give away that this is a given rate. But also they tell you that the balloon is being inhaled with the rate R of T. And that's why it's called R. Since this is the rate, and they ask you what is the volume, they're going back from derivative. Do you understand that? Rate is given. Volume, answer for the volume will not be liters per second. It will be fixed liters cubed, right? So, volume is undoing the differentiation. And the process that undoes differentiation called integration of this function. 1 plus 2t squared dt. And then they tell you there is a phrase there for how long. If so, make a note here, they ask you in one minute. In one minute. But they gave us everything in seconds. So I will have to convert one minute into seconds, which is just 60. We're integrating from 0 to 60 seconds. That's the question of understanding the relationship between derivative and integration. And then the integral shows up, and you need to learn how to integrate that. Do you know how to integrate this? Who knows? I would do u sub. You can also do square of sum if you want. Calculus 1 students are supposed to be able to do this without u substitution. But u sub is faster. If you remember a shortcut, a shortcut will be so the constant. And then u sub, if you choose this to be u, will be 1 plus 2t cube over 3, right? But then undoing the undoing chain rule, let's divide by the leading coefficient, this one. So times 1 half. That is a u sub shortcut if you want to learn that, but you don't have to. So it's fine. A bar from 0 to 60, and the answer is 5314680. What's the units? Liters. Cube. Liters cube? No. No. Just liters, yeah. Wait, wasn't there some one of the multiple choice questions in the practice test? Everything is in the practice test. You should not ask me every time. No, no, no. I copy paste all of these questions to practice test. So yes, they are there. 
either multiple choice or for response. Yes. On these tabs, are we able to use a shortcut? Since I taught you, yes. That's the whole point. Since I taught you, I'm allowing to use it. That's why when I share my notes with other instructors, they might not like it, and they force their students to ignore my notes. <laughs> but that's up to them, so I'm fine with that. How about getting closer into these problems? Square root of x and square root of x dx. You will see something like this on a test. There's so many versions of what to choose and how to proceed with the uh, USAP. First of all, we might tell you this should be done using USAP, but do you understand that? Again, I asked you before, what is your intuition behind USAP or integration by parts? If one part is a derivative of another part, then probably it's USAP. So do you see it? For number 12, what would you choose to be U? Always choose stuff inside of other stuff. So that don't choose the whole thing to be U. Usually it doesn't work. I know how to do sine of U when you integrate it, but I don't know how to do sine of square root of X. So it makes sense to try what you just said and then see if it works. If you fail, probably just something different. Maybe it's integration by parts. U is square root of X. Who knows how to differentiate square root of square root of x? One over two x. One over two square root of x, right? I just taught yesterday on Tuesday into my calculus one class. They really got confused with the square root part. So move on. So I have this one over square root of x dx, but I need times two in the denominator. So my way is. Let's make it happen, but means I'm dividing my two, so I will multiply by two. Or basically you solve for dx, that also works. You can solve for dx from the u sub process. And then the result will be two sine u du. See, did you get it too fast or no? U sub will be your favorite topic at some point, to be honest. And then the integral of sine is either cosine or minus cosine to check it, differentiate quickly in your mind, and figure out which one is that. Minus cosine of u, and maybe to save your own time, plug your u back right away. Square root of x plus c. Agree? So can you do it in a test on Tuesday? Uh, it's very, I never make tricky tests. There's no tricks there. It's exactly what I showed you in the review practice test. So. You will see things there, and we just I just want to see that you know how to do that. That's it. How about the second one, number 13? Ln x. I would try that and see if it works. And it works because I can see 1 over x somewhere. du is 1 over x dx. So it's exactly the same integral. It's also sine u du. Do you see? It's actually even more perfect match. Just this time, u is different. It's a doing change, and whatever was inside is just different. But the idea is the same. It's minus cosine, but this time there's a log inside. Plus c. See? So either we ask you to choose something or actually finish integrating. Very nice. Questions about this? I'm going fast in my reviews because that's a review. Uh, my idea of my reviews, if you are comfortable with this, you make a note, I think I'm good at this. If you're freaking out right now, that is okay. Make a star, go home and practice it. So my review are supposed to help you to reflect on your own preparedness for the test. You have enough time to prepare from today. How about this? 2t and then e to the minus 2t dt. What would you do? IBP, I can try your substitution. Maybe I will choose this to be U, but it will not going to work. DU is minus two and T there is still there. So that's kind of problem. <coughs> that was not good. So integration by parts ask you to be smart with a choice. Uh, and my colleague yesterday told me that the Li Ate rule actually uh, it's not the same around the world. He says students in India told him that they do I-L first. I-L-A-T-E. And then I told him students in my country don't know Liate at all. 
So I learned it only when I came here. So Liate is a really good idea to know what to choose to be you when you see those functions. If you see log, I don't see log. Choose that to be you. Inverse, I don't see that. Algebra. In general, exponential function is the worst choice because when you differentiate it, it stays the same. So it's like copying the same problem again and again. But if you differentiate, you should see it like one step ahead. If you differentiate 2t, it gives you 2. So t disappears and that makes you happy. If this is u, then this doesn't have a choice to be dv. Practice integration by parts. u is 2t. du is 2dt. dv is e minus 2t dt. And that's where the u sub comes in, inside of the integration by parts. This should be chosen to be u for u substitution, or you use a shortcut, which I highly recommend. Shortcut says exponential function copies itself, and then you divide by the leading coefficient. Leading coefficient is minus 2. Minus 2. So I'm dividing by the leading coefficient. Undoing chain rule, basically. And then the formula says cross product minus bottom product. If you organize it this way, or some of you doing the table method, which is fine to uh, represent the way you organize the information for integration by parts doesn't matter. You do it the way you, you were taught or you like, the result matters. So this integral matters right now. How you organize your integration by parts, that is your um, choice. I'm not going to take points off for that. 2t times e to the minus 2t over minus 2 minus, there's a minus in the formula, integral product at the bottom, copy the same function one more time, times 2 dt. Idea of the integration by parts is from the hard integral, you hope to break it in two parts. That's why it's integration by parts. Something which is ready, no need to integrate this anymore, and the simple integral. And it is simple, we know how to do that. So it worked. If it did not work, you try again, or maybe something different. So the answer will be, let me just uh, simplify it quickly. It's going to be minus t, e to the minus 2t, and then plus. How many minuses are there going to be? So, okay, minus and minus, that's plus one half, but it will be one more minus, right? e to the minus 2t over minus 2 one more time. Oh, there's it also a 2 over here, plus c. So I'm integrating it, and this minus 2 shows up one more time. While this minus 2, I just kicked it out. Well, you, you could cancel everything, and it becomes minus t, e to the minus 2t, minus e to the minus 2t over 2 plus c. I think that's correct. Let me make it a pretty box. Like so, integration by parts. And now we're gonna do something which we're going to have today on the quiz. I did something last time, let's see. We are going to have, we're not gonna have a quiz right now, but uh, we are going to have table integrals and then how to know secant, cosecant stuff, and of course, partial fraction decomposition. Partial fraction decomposition, let me jump into that, just to make sure you remember this. 25. Partial fraction decomposition might have two forms on a test, and that's why they, you see two forms on the review and practice exam. One form might be a free response, and the other one might be a multiple choice. For free response, I'm asking you to do the whole procedure, including finding A, B, C, and then not forgetting to actually you know, complete the problem. So, if I ask you to do the whole thing, you don't forget to integrate at the end. But for multiple choice, sometimes we just ask you, do you know how to break it into three integrals, or two integrals, or how many integrals? Choose from the list. And you're like, yes, I do. This is 11x minus 46 all over. Change your denominator using quadratic formula or any methods you know, the other theorem dx and now maybe I will ask you just to choose from the list how would you break it into pieces 
And now you need to just remember if there's a quadratic shape, it will be AX plus B. If it's an X plus 4 squared, it will be X plus 4, one fraction, and an X plus 4 squared, another fraction, right? So your job is to remember those types. There are only like four of them, to be honest. So you need to memorize that. For this case, it will be A over the first fraction, DX plus B over this second fraction, DX. Agree? Nothing too complicated. But again, for other shapes, you might have squares and AX plus B and so on. And then maybe I ask you to find all of this. Do you know how to do that? You create an equation. This thing, the numerator, 11x minus 46, equals these guys multiplied by whatever did not cancel out. So x minus 2 is the extra piece. And then x plus 4 is the extra piece. A, x minus 2 plus B, x plus 4. This is a system of linear equations here with two unknowns a and b you can create a system here either by collecting the terms or guessing nice numbers guessing nice numbers is actually a fast way for the small equations like this x2 x equals 2 will give you 22 minus 46 equals b times 6 minus 4 is minus 44 minus 46 equals minus 6a, and so on, and you solve for a and b. The thing is, when you solve for a and b, that is not the answer. On the exam, I remember, many students just leave it as it is. What is your a and b? What is your b and a? Anyone calculate it? What one? Which one? 15 and b? Negative four, thank you. Put it in the box. So many students on the exam one leave me this answer. They say equal, and then there's an integral. A is 15 over x plus four dx. My, and then plus integral minus four x minus two dx. And then that's it, and then they leave the problem. No, the whole point was to find these A and B, to integrate. And you one step away from the correct answer, and then I have to take lots of points for not integrating because you're forgetting the whole goal. This is just lots of logarithms. X plus 4 minus 4 logarithm X minus 2 plus C. Agree? So this is a good one. Either multiple choice or free response. That's a shortcut. Uh, if you don't remember, I just did a... I just did a u sub shortcut 1 over ax plus b dx is a natural logarithm absolute value ax plus b and to undo chain rule you divide by the leading coefficient that's what i did don't forget to divide not b to divide by the leading coefficient a some cases like these Number 26, you need to be good at breaking them into uh, fractions. If you have x minus 4 squared and x squared plus 9x plus 45, 9x dx. Do you know how to break this? So if you don't, that's a good part to put a star and practice this at home a over x minus 4 because it's linear but it's repeated twice so you will have b over x minus 4 squared and you keep accumulating those powers until you get the power you need that is how you deal with the first factor plus and then what happens with this guy x squared you try to break it into uh, fractions uh, into parentheses but you cannot you see this quadratic formula tells you that's the shape you have deal with this so what should I put then here CX plus D so you see if you don't get this part you still have time to practice by two and then you repeat the whole parts if we ask you but again equal sign if I put integral here these are three small integrals 
three small integrals. And the whole point is to find ABCD and to finish integrating it. Then, uh, this was almost the last topic. We just covered Simpson's trapezoid. And so we're going back to two topics left. Think about it. That's all we learned. Two topics are your favorite ones, your favorite topics. Either integrating stupid trigonometric functions or integrating using stupid trigonometric functions. And that's it. So we did not cover lots of topics for exam one, and that's why usually it's the best one out of those. And you just need to practice this. So let's do it. Oh, and table integrals. Table integrals, usually students love it, so I don't feel bad about this at all. Table integrals. Let me show you where I look. We'll have, oh, you see, we just reviewed this part. Very nice. 15 and minus 4. Table integral problems will look like this. Will look like this. Number 29. Basically, very simple. That's what you're going to have right now in the quiz. So try to wake up right now. Because uh, in case you're sleeping, this is a good moment to wake up. 3x squared, oh, just a second, uh, x to the 16 minus 16 dx, yes? You can try. Sometimes you cannot. Sometimes it doesn't have roots, so then you cannot. I did not try this one, so I just assume you cannot. <laughs> okay, so if there is, uh, we can break it, but is it okay if we leave it like this? Actually, it's a good question. That's it. Actually, works if you don't break it. We just kind of don't teach it. You're supposed to break it into parentheses to make it linear parts. If you cannot, then you do x plus b. But actually, you're right. If you don't break it, it's still going to work. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty deep question. Just the way they teach here, they try to stick to this table, and the table I'm talking about looks like this: partial fraction decomposition. They try to stick to this table. That only four cases. Linear once, linear repeated because of the power, quadratic, quadratic repeated. But like, excuse me, this is still quadratic, so of course they have correlation. And it will work if you do either or. But they always tell me, try to teach consistently with this table. So I'm trying to do that. But do you know what, I, what you asked? It was a good question. This, do we have to break it into these parentheses or not? Actually, you don't have to. It will work if you do it this way. But we try to teach that you should. You should break it. So try to break it into parents, into factors. That was the question. Yeah. <laughs> there was a there was a joke about this I found somewhere. I will show you the meme about it uh, when, you know, like 100% on the exam and then there's like balloon flying away plus C and you're losing like 100%. Don't lose plus C. I will not tell you how many points you're going to. Just don't lose it. That's it. Yeah, I can wait. It's going to be what? Which ones? Oh, recursive. Nah, too long. Not no recursive. That's too long for the exam. Remember how long it took you to do it in your homework? That will take you half of the exam just to complete the recursive integral. But for you to know, it's a good question. For you to know, recursive integral does has a formula. That's what I put it on the quiz today. Uh, recursive integral is actually part of the table integrals. So some people just found it and like, wait, why do you need to perform integration by parts twice or three times if there is a formula in a table? That's true, there is. But that's outside of the question you asked. No, on the exam, it's not going to be there. Plus C, don't lose your plus C. I will tell you a joke at the end about this. So using this table, yes? Are you going to give us that like, on the test for them saying using that exact Yes, that's why I told you. You should go and check out the practice exam. Uh, because there I show you how I'm going to give it to you. I saw it on there. I just didn't know it. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm very proud about it because it took me so much time to create, to code it. This used Java code for you to know, and I don't know Java code, so surprisingly, it was very simple to learn. <laughs> because I know many codes, I guess it's like good enough to learn anything new.
But it's exactly what I coded here. Each step is coded, okay? Do you know how hard it is to code all of this? So, yes, this is exactly what I'm going to give you, and that's why it's so good. That was a good idea. So do you guys know how to do problems like this? Who knows? Who wants to yell? So let's see, what is your u? x to the 3, you said. Then du is 3x. I don't know if you're right or not, so let me just try. 3x squared dx. What is your a? 4. Let's see if it works. Equal sign, equal sign. Seems like this is perfect. Uh, du over here. So this is my du x. But what about x to the 6? It becomes what? u squared, right? So it's going to be du over the square root u squared minus, bless you, 4 squared. And it's a perfect match of the formula over here. ln of u, and let's switch back right away. u is x cubed plus a square root. u squared is still x to the 6 minus 16 plus c. Yeah, it's one of those logarithm functions. Don't forget to fix the, if there's no 3 over here. Then you have to fix it, and then the answer will have one third. You know what I mean? So coefficients might be not perfectly matching. What if this is like 35? Then fix it somehow. Figure out. Figure out to match perfectly the formula. So these are these very these are very nice problems to have on the exam and on the quiz. You will have them right now. Finally, what else I wanted to show you before we start the quiz is. Integrals with sine, secant, stuff like that. Those guys. Lost it. Integrals with, do you remember how to integrate? Do you need integrate 5 sine square x dx? How to integrate this? Also, I don't show you definite integrals, but you should assume there should be some definite integrals over there. So just for you to know. How about that? Do you know how to do this one? Half angle. Half angle. Yeah, exactly. So in this case, I even see I have some definite integral. Whatever. It's going to be one half, but just this five is in front. Who cares? One half. And then you remember it's one plus or minus cosine of double angle. Since it is sine, it is minus. And then you proceed. It will be integral five over two dx minus. 5 integral cosine 2x dx. Solve using u sub. So you remember this. Finally, we reviewed also these. Let's review these two functions. So review at home by yourself. Number 21, 22, 23 from the exam review. Number 22 is this one. Sine cube x. Cosine square x. There are also one sum with secant and tangent. No, oh yes, yeah, secant squared and tangent cube stuff like that. How do you do these guys? Who remembers? That's the one where you have to move the odd one. The odd one yeah. is the odd one. Okay, so you have to figure it out and make it evil. Oh, I mean even. So you will have sine square x, cosine square x, and the leftover goes to the tail. Sine x dx, exactly. The tail tells you what is du. This will be du. So that's the rare case when, not a rare case, but it's like an interesting idea that du shows up first. Now you have to figure out what u is. It gave you this du. Minus cosine will be u. So cosine. Then that means this will be my u, which is u squared. But this has no connection with cosine. Oh, it has. It's 1 minus cosine squared. The integral becomes 1 minus cosine squared x. Cosine squared x. And this tail. Sine x dx. Don't touch the tail. This is du because sine, because cosine will be chosen to be u plus or minus. So you can figure it out. Cosine x is u. Then integral is 1 minus u squared u squared times u squared times minus du so i will kick it out outside and you integrate this so review these problems 
when you integrate this, it becomes u cube over 3, but u is cosine. So cosine x over 3, 3 to the over 3, plus u 5 over 5, but this is cosine, so u cosine 5 over 5 plus c. And the nasty ones were the one when we ask you to plug secant, tangent, or cosecant, uh, sine, secant, and tangent. You need to know which one to use when and how to work with this. It will look like so. Like so. Either you actually have to finish and perform the whole thing. That's how I remember the one with plus is the only one that uses tangent. The minus ones are using either secant, this one, either secant or sine. I remember that if if the input goes second, that is secant. If the input goes first, that is sine. That's how I remember it at least. So I know that this, I think, second. No, no, if the constant, okay, the other way around. If the constant goes second, then it's secant. If the constant goes first, that is sine. So it's arc sine, but don't forget to fix this coefficient three. So I already know that this is arc sine x over three. The one we just did is over here, sine cube cosine square. The balloon, we did it. One more stuff. So substitution, temperature. Don't forget these applicational problems might be on the exam because engineering department asks us to put some applicational problems for the engineers. So blame engineers every time you see an annoying problem like this, you, you know whom to blame, you know? That's your substitution actually, but they want like to make a backstory about it. So we were forced to do that. Finally, uh, remember if you go to modules, you have all my notes there. So what I wanted to show you right now was Partial fraction decomposition, integrals with tricks, no, this one, integrals with strict substitutions. So here is a table for you. I gave you this table and I found a better table today, actually. So on your quiz, I gave you a better table, but on the exam, you will not have it. This is how I remember it. If constant goes second, that is secant. If constant goes first, it is sine, and then the only one with plus is tangent. This is how I memorize it. Maybe you have a better way to do it. Review the notes. You can use them right now for the quiz. And have fun with this stuff. And this. You're lucky I did not put any triangle on the quiz too long. So definite integrals are easy because you don't need to go to the triangle and undo this in and I undo the substitution. Because it just requires to find a number, the answer. That's it. Questions about anything? Did I tell you an inappropriate joke about plus C before? Okay, so I will tell you now. In a proper joke, I always say it in my classes. The teacher is come going to work uh, to school and passing a bad neighborhood. And that neighborhood, some kind of sketchy drawings on the walls. And then he passes by and he looks at something like, oh no, this is so inappropriate. And he sees this, right? And he's like, no, like kids are passing by here. How come you wrote this down? He's like, I'm teaching you so many years and you still forget to put DX. <laughs> so it's the a joke about don't forget about the DX part. It makes everything better. That's the idea. Did you get the joke? If you didn't, stay after class, I'll let you know. <laughs>